Hi once again. Um, welcome to episode 813, 813 that is. The topic today is about spirituality. I'm gonna, and don't turn off just yet. <laughs> I'm talking about functional, effective, and um, practical spirituality. So the topic today is how spiritual are you? Are you spiritual when you're stuck on the 405? Um, that's for the LA people. You might not get it if you don't live in LA, but I'll explain more as I get into it. Before I jump into the whole thing, let me introduce myself and I might tweak my introduction because of the new direction that's happening as we speak. My name is Barry Selby, that hasn't changed. <laughs> you may have guessed that by looking at broadcast somewhere. I'm an inspirational speaker and I'm a love and, relationship, love and relationships expert, but I'm also a spiritual guide. That's the piece I've been talking about. I've been hiding that for a long time. I'll speak about that in a moment. I'm also the author of the best-selling book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a book for men and women about for, for couples and singles. It's a great book if you're looking for love in the wrong places and you want to do it the right way. And I also help women create balance in love, life, and business because I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine. That's also what started these talks over two and a half, two and a half years ago now, called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring Your Feminine Heart. And today we're episode number 813. I've got a few talks under my belt. But today we're going to go on a different different journey, a different different path. So I'm about spirituality and a sense of how to make it practical, usable, functional, and what really spirituality is and what it isn't, because I really want to break this one down. It's been on my mind for a while. So you can ask yourself these questions, and if you're a religious person or not, this is this is independent of that. It's kind of like it's non... It's like when I talk about stuff that's about men and women, it's non-gender specific. This is about non-religion non specific. It's open to both ends. So when I say how spiritual are you, I'm really asking how present, loving, caring, detached, compassionate, understanding, um, uh, being being authentic. There's a few other things in there. So I'll get back to that in more detail in a moment. So the reason I'm talking about this is because, um, well, partly because an article a friend of mine posted, actually one of my teachers posted about a week ago, about how he was responding to the Epstein suicide. And I'm not going to go into that conversation, but I want to speak about is the context of what he said, because for me, it really hit me hard, because as a spiritual student, and I've been on this path for 30 plus years, I always have this interesting in, internal quandary. Yeah, it's an argument, it's a quandary. Quandary is often an argument, in case you didn't know, about what I'm doing, if it's spiritual or not. And there are certain people who are spiritual, who are very... Um, Detached from physicality, I call that as, as Lisa Nichols, one of my friends, talks about. She, uh, talks about she calls it spiritual saran wrap, and when I talked about this in my master's program, I called it spiritual bypass. It's basically using spirituality to avoid dealing with stuff in the world. I'm uh, I'm averse to that personally. I, I'm 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 more pro practical spirituality because we're living in a practical environment. We live in a physical world, an experiential, practical place where stuff happens. You know, stuff, that thing, <laughs> things called life. And being spiritual doesn't mean like I'm just going to like close my eyes and breathe deeply and put my fingers together in the mantra and go and, and ohm to myself and, and hope it goes away. That's not spirituality to me. That's avoidance. So I'm going to be very blunt about this because there are people out there watch, who watch my broadcast and people I know who are very spiritual in conditions that match that. But when they're out of that, they don't know how to be spiritual. For example, <laughs> no money mentioned. But as I've said many times, you know, if you know me, you know that I go to my, the spiritual center I go to, called Agape, in, um, hey Marvin, I see you, long time no see. Thanks for being in broadcast. So a spiritual center I go to in LA, called Agape, the International Spiritual Center, is very, very famous for those people who follow The Secret, or watch Michael Beckwith on Oprah, or on Larry King. I've been going there for, I've been there for 25, been going attending for 25 years, been a spiritual counselor since, 19, since 2000, so it's been a long time. But I watch people who go there and who either come in with a certain upset because they can't get to meditation. Like, they come in upset. Like, they need meditation to get calmed down so they can actually come to meditation, which is messed up. Um, or when they leave, it's kind of like um, they're spiritual, everyone's loving, hugging, it was great. They get in the car, and then the demon takes over. You know, that sort of thing. So that's what cracks me up in a way, but also reminds me that spirituality is not about how long you meditate for. It's not about where do you go to study, where do you go. Um, in fact... Two, two days ago, two days ago, for the first time ever, I went to the Surf Realization Fellowship here in Los Angeles. Now I've been in LA for over thirty-five years, thirty, thirty-eight years now, thirty-nine. Wow, 
since since 81, so 38 years, yes. All that time I've been here, I'd never been until two days ago to the Self-Realization Fellowship, Lake Shrine, Lake Shrine up in uh, well, Sunset, in the Palisades. I just never got around to it. So I finally went two days ago, and I walked around. It was a beautiful space. I love the energy of that. But it's interesting because as I'm sitting there and, and just taking in the space and meditating for a moment, hearing the sirens go by on Sunset, because Sunset Boulevard is right behind the, the, um, the, the, the lake, just how interesting the environment is because it reminded me that frankly spirituality is how you can be centered in a very uncentered environment how can you be when you can be present to yourself when the world around you is going crazy but it's not about avoiding it this is the thing and i will speak to this a bit more because it's been what's been on my mind a lot recently as i said my one of my teachers talks about how he would respond maybe react how he'd respond to the to epstein if he'd met him before he, he killed himself and again I'm not going to speak about that thing because there's a whole the jury's still out whether he actually committed suicide or if he was murdered, if he in fact was, if he actually did die and was not, you know, there's lots of conspiracies out there. Anyway, but my po the point about that was my teacher was speaking at one of my teachers and one of my guys, I love him dearly, his good friend, was talking about how if he had, for example, met him when he was doing what he was doing with purportedly to do with being a sexual predator with children. He probably would have been somewhat. Um, he would have channeled the spirit of Kali. Let's put it that way. If you know Kali, K A L I, L I, Kali carries a big sword, and she is, um, she's a god, goddess. She's a god, but also kills because there's a certain um, righteousness to that. And I don't mean righteous indignation. I mean being being in a real place of understanding. The spirituality can sometimes be that that lethal as a protective in interest because to be spiritual doesn't mean so be someone attached that somebody can invade your house kill your family and you stand by and go it's okay spirituality can also be you take the guy out or the person to come out who's invading your house because you protect your family that's still being spiritual being spiritual mentioning the 405 free the 405 by the way in case you don't live in la the 405 is the biggest freeway in la probably the most um traffic jammed freeway often enough for the whole country it's well known across the United States. If you don't live in, uh, in the United States, you may not know that. But the 405 freeway is a very powerful spiritual test. <laughs> because for many people, being on the 405 is a test of patience. It's a test of um, ingenuity. It's a test of flexibility. Because the freeway is an experience that's not very easy. But the thing is, it's, it's a place where you get to learn how to be effective. Because sometimes... You can be very proactive about finding your way through. Maybe you take shortcuts, or maybe you find another way of going through, or maybe you turn on something enjoyable on the radio. All of that can be spiritual. It's when you get knocked off center and you get antsy and reactive, that's where it doesn't work. So, so I want to speak to this, 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 almost, this apparent duality, because in one context, to channel the spirit of Kali to take somebody out because they're attacking your family is okay, and that's spiritual. But getting angry and upset with somebody on the freeway isn't spiritual. And here's the difference. At least this is my perception of the difference. When you are reacting to somebody because they cut you up on the freeway, for example, that's from a place of ego, reactivity, and judgment that the other person is something that, that offended you, basically. And it comes from a place where you decide that you're more right than they are, and therefore you are going to be upset with them. Now, and, and, and the key quality in there is judgment. Judgment is one of these things, there's almost the difference between being spiritual and not being spiritual in one way. Because the thing about it is, I'm spiritual, I, I believe I'm a spiritual person, and I have judgment, so I'm going to explain how to get there. Having judgments isn't mean you can't be spiritual, but judging means you're not focusing on your spirituality at the same time. So it puts you in a place where you can be in judgment and be upset with somebody the question is how long do you stay there and what do you do to get out of it now if you simply stuff it and pretend it's okay and you, you go everything's all good i'm good i'm gonna pray and be fine that may not be spiritual because what you've done is ignored what happened you've suppressed it you haven't dealt with it the way through and i'm passionate about finding the way through as i mentioned in a talk a couple of days ago, yesterday day before is about how having the the uh, resource of self-forgiveness 
is one way to get back to being spiritual again, or one way to remember your spirituality. Because when you're doing forgiveness, what you're doing is moving back into a place of compassion and caring for yourself, which is a spiritual quality, and then allowing what happened to come forward so you can release it in a way that's healthy. Forgiveness is not forgetting, by the way. Some people say, you know, you, you forgive so you can forget what happened. No, you can remember what happened, but you don't judge it. And the key thing is it's the judgment. The judgment is a wedge that puts you between you and your spirituality, I believe. So if you're carrying around a, a lot of judgments about things, maybe an ex-partner, maybe the traffic today on the freeway, maybe it's a daily practice that you spend a lot of time in judgment, you're not going to be very spiritual at the same time. It's very hard to do that. So understanding the difference and understanding that you can get back there is the step towards that remembrance. Because being spiritual isn't something where you lose it and you're done. Spirituality is part of who we are when we remember. And remembering is half the battle. It's like being aware of it and being awareness of what's going on. So my, um, this piece was going to come to. So it talks about that, talk about that, to make sure I cover all the pieces. So what's happening for me now, what's changing for me now, is I'm moving into expanding my coaching, expanding my support, expanding my guidance for clients to really start talking about this more because I'm realizing more and more that in the relationship paradigm I've worked in for a long time, that's an aspect of what happens with people working on their stuff. You know, when you're in a relationship, your stuff comes up. If it hasn't come up for you, you haven't been in the right <laughs> relationships, but it is in there. So for me, the work I'm doing now more and more, which I've actually been doing for the last 20 plus years, which is being a spiritual counselor, which I was doing through Agape, is to bring that aspect into my work with my clients. And as I sent an email to my, my email to my audience last night, I call, I've been calling it um, functional spiritual leadership, which is a fancy term, but basically what I'm talking about is having spirituality be functional and effective, a practice you can do every day and live it, not just to meditate and ohm to, you know, for 20 minutes every morning. How do you live spiritually in the world every day? That's one part. And by doing so, you start to lead your life in a new way, and that's why I call it leadership. It's not leading necessarily leading the world out in, the, out in front of country, companies. It's about how do you own your own um, spiritual print values when you're out in the world living life, doing your life, being functional, being effective. It means how do you be spiritual in your relationships? Primary relationships, family relationships. Oh, that's a dangerous one. Family relationships. How many of those are challenging for you when you're not being, trying to be spiritual? That's a whole other conversation. But it's the recognition is that your spiritual ability, your spiritual um, resource is a function of how you get to love yourself and appreciate yourself and also release judgments that will come up in your life. The people that avoid judgments, they're not spiritual. That's a difference. A spiritual person realizes they're in judgment and chooses out of it by doing something called self-forgiveness. It's, it's a simple process in a way. But for working with my clients, for some of them, they've never had the exposure to that sense of compassion and love for themselves that helps them heal that. So, so we don't want to go with that. So this is a reminder, basically in simple terms. But what I'm also going to let you know is that I'm offering something new. Actually, I'm, 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 speak, I'm leaning into this, this thing that downloaded called called practical, called, excuse me, not practical, functional, which maybe should be practical, functional spiritual <laughs> leadership as a teaching, which I'm going to work in my clients on now more because I'm really aligning my relationship skills with my spiritual practices to put together to teach my clients something new, which will help them live in the light, the world a much more effective way. So the relationships will improve, but so will their life on a much bigger level. What I'm, what I've offered, and if you're interested, let me know, you can message me and I'll put a, I, um, I'll put a link in the comments for a contact form so you can reach out to me. I will be um, offering a, a for one session test drive. You, would you pay? Would you pay for? You invest in it to see if you like what I'm talking about. And I'll give you some guidance, some steps, and you get to work through some of your challenges. And if you like that, and we can go deeper. You can sign up for a longer term agreement package. How you to call that? But I realize more and more I need to offer this because it's been sitting on the back burner for a while, and I haven't done anything about it. But recently, it became very clear I need to speak about this. So this is my first public outing on my own Facebook page. I've talked about it in a private group, and I did email, email, my, email my audience last night. So if you haven't got the email from me, I'm letting you know here verbally. So I'll put a link in the comments for a contact form so you reach out to me and ask me about it and give me more information. Um, I'll also put the self-love practice in there because self-love is a pivot point. I keep talking about this because it's so clear for over a year and a half now that self-love is a key component of how you come back to your own spiritual self because we can act spiritual and we're like going to give me great, but the problem is some people start acting holier than thou, and you know those people, don't you? It's about how do you love yourself when you make mistakes? 
How do you love yourself when you don't make mistakes? How do you love yourself, period? That sense of loving gives you a place to resource so you, can, you actually become more spiritual because you're living that every day. So the self-love practice will be in the comments and the contact form will be there for you to reach out to me find out more information about what I'm doing. I think that's really it. I wanted to just drop this, this teaching on you because it's a bigger piece than, I mean, it's bigger than just this talk, but it's a key component for a lot of people who don't understand how to work through this. If you're challenged by this and don't know how to work through this area easily, I'm offering this opportunity to work with me for a single session to get really clear, and then you can go work further with me if you want to. If you're dealing with judgments a lot, if you're having challenges in your relationships, if you can't handle the 405, <laughs> for example, or anything that is basically in your face that's not letting you have peace, if you're not living in a place of peace inside yourself and grace, reach out to me. I can help you with that. I think that's really what I want to say. That's the bottom line of my message today because it's something new that I haven't really talked about before. So I hope this has been of value to you. Um, this is maybe a new direction. It's certainly adding to what I already do. But if you want to get help, reach out to me. I'm here to help you on that level. This is my daily Facebook Live, in case you haven't seen me do my Facebook Live before. I do this every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time on my personal page, which is Barry Selby. If you want to join me live, make sure you join me at 5 p.m. Pacific time, every day of the week, seven days a week. You can, I believe, around this broadcast somewhere, there should be a three dots you can tap on, which will let you be notified next time I go live, so you'll be already there. Thank you, Marvin. I appreciate you being here, and peace, love, and gumbo to you, too. It's good to hear you. Good to hear, good to hear your voice in my head saying that, so thank you for that. Um, the replays are on my business page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby, the author. You can always watch them there. They're all listed in reverse order, as well as on my YouTube channel. So my personal, my business page on Facebook, you can like that, please. That'd be great. The YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby, which is youtube.com forward slash user forward slash Barry Selby. You can subscribe to my YouTube channel. There's a playlist on there called Messages from the Masculine. That's easy to sort through, to be honest, because they're actually listed close together in, in uh, the titles. So if you're looking for through, find a particular topic, you can search there more easily. So that is where you find my replays. I can tell you how to join me live every day. I'll give the links in the comments again, the contact form, find out how to work with me, and also the um, self-love practice, because that'll help you get going as well. With that, thank you for watching. I appreciate being with me as always. Um, take care of yourself. As always, take care of yourself. And I'll see you again tomorrow. Take care. Bye.